So, hi guys, this is the final episode of the aftermath for One Division, and for today we thought we'd do something a little different. Since the Halloween episode, we all couldn't dress up, and Mitch mm. wasn't available. We thought we'd dress up today, and um, yeah, we're all looking a little bit fancier than usual. Um, Alex's hair looks on point as usual. Mitch looks very nice in his suit. <laughs> You look so, yeah. lovely as well. Oh, thank you. Um, so jumping straight into it, let's we we've been talking about this for the past two days because obviously we're yeah. filming this mm. on Sunday. Let's jump into it. Thoughts on the finale. You go first, Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say that um overall I think it's um I'd say it was pretty good. It's like it's always um um sticking the landing is like is is hard you know and like yeah. especially in a show that's sort of like um so much of it revolving around like sort of mystery and like sort of build up and being unpredictable it's hard to be both unpredictable and then filling in the end but i'd yeah. say like it's um um for like the all of the emotional side of everything and like sort of wonder's arc and like you know the culmination of all of that that was all like that that was fantastic mm, that was yeah and definitely it's um i know it's um uh what's what it's um uh this is something i've um that um i thought about recently of um um in terms of um like how the how the series compared to like um and the finale compared to like sort of some other um different sort of like shorter season tv shows i was gonna like sort of give a bit of a comparison to Teen Wolf, Mitch, and how, like, and mm-hmm. that's the thing you've always noted that, like, the the beginning of the sort of series final sort of part of the story will happen, like, like three quarters of the way through a 12-episode mm-hmm. season. Like, there's still yeah. three episodes to go when usually they'll just be in the one episode the thing. And yeah. I'd say that <laughs> that's one thing I'd sort of thought of with WandaVision is, like, I sort of, I think... um it's like a couple of bits in the finale felt like a little bit too rushed mm. for me. Yeah. Bit, yeah. And yeah. I feel like the um is sort of as a mini series, like sort of spacing that out a little bit more so that the whole sort of like final chapter of the story wasn't just sort of relegated to just the one episode. It's like because um but yeah, it's like um yeah, that's just, <laughs> that was just what yeah. I was thinking. No, I, I I agree with you, mean. It's like with the sort of um the build-up we'd had for the whole season to the end of the story i think it could have done with the reveal coming just like one episode like the reveal of like agatha and then just one episode earlier i think would have been would have been useful i think Mm -hmm. just to have uh more time to i don't know because it's weird because like they had we had good character moments in the final episode but it was very much like uh the the climax of the story of the uh you know um evil vision turning up and agatha trying to take control of one's powers and all that sort of stuff that all just was resolved extremely quickly Mm, definitely and it's something i would have liked to have seen like play out longer and it's i don't know how the best way to do it would have been honestly because the way they i guess it would have to have been like one of the, the second last episode sort of as it's ending is when all the fighting and everything starts and then we begin the final episode we go back into the fighting is continuing mm. so we can have more time telling that story and i think that like, all of this the conflict happening in in westview all sort of happening at once i guess instead of yeah. instead of um <laughs> Yeah, that's the other thing. It was like it was for it was like the final. It's like the final battle, but it was very much like uh, Vision dealt with Dark Vision very quickly, and then separately that after he did that was then when Agatha and Wanda had their fight that was dealt with, and then separately that as well was all of Hayward and his men being dealt with separately. It wasn't like it wasn't all happening at once. It was just mm. like. Here's this problem. Okay, we fix that. New problem. Okay, we fix that. New problem. We fix that. Okay, and then we can end. Mm, you know. Yeah. And I, I just would have liked to have seen more of it all happening at once. I guess, and like this massive culmination of events. And yeah, I, I think that's the only way I can think that they could have done it better because we, like, 
it was the longest episode of the series, right? Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Minutes. Yeah, and even with that, it was all sort of over very quickly, and there was sort of that was it. And a lot of characters, I felt, didn't get to do as much as they could have. And it's just, yeah, I, I think you're right. So I mean, if just having everything kick off just like one episode earlier could have really helped to make things flow a little more naturally. Yeah, I definitely agree as well. I think if they had done like a two-part finale, I think yeah. it would have been, worked a lot better. Mm. Um, it Like I said in my reaction though, like everything that happened with Wanda and obviously the vision that she created was beautifully dealt with, especially with the kids, etc. All so well done. Mm. But yeah, especially with the fighting, I've gone back and watched it, the episode like two or three times now. And yeah, I have to definitely agree. It feels like the fighting doesn't happen all at once. It's like mm. I was watching... This is another thing, but this is comparing to it. It's sort of like uh, the very bad real life version of Avatar, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Last Airbender. Yeah. Um, it feels like the fighting's happening one by one. Like people are waiting mm. for their cues to go and yeah, fight. Yeah. It's sort of like what happened with Avatar. That's what happened. Like you could see like different actors waiting to fight and stuff mm. instead of everyone being engaged at once. Um, so I think that was something that they could have worked on a little bit more. Um, and again, well, you and me spoke about this last night, Mitch. The mm. whole thing with vision and anti-vision, that could have been dealt with a lot better, especially mm. because it was so resolved so quickly. And I thought he would be there for majority of the episode. He was only there, like, screen time-wise, only for, like, five, ten minutes, probably, mm. yeah. or even less. So I was really disappointed with that. Um, I, like, I mean, it's sort of been hinted at that we're probably going to see him again at some point, but... At the same time, I was just like, where the f where, where did he go? Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. He just disappeared. He was like, nah, I'm out. Bye. <laughs> like, yeah. I was just like, eh, I don't know how I feel about that. But yeah, that was very, that was very disappointing on that part. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I think like if the, the actual sequence of um, um, Vision and um, <laughs> I hadn't heard anti-Vision as a time because I saw lots of people on Twitter last night talking about, okay, so what mm. do we call him? Okay, <laughs> we're calling him uh, Division. No. <laughs> but, yeah, um, but the bit when there was like the conflict between the two of them that was probably one of my favorite moments in the whole mm. episode of like sort of it's something that really um felt like a really good sort of callback to age of ultron and like the sort of the little sequence mm. right at the end when there's like the last ultron standing and Vision, mm. they just have this little sort of philosophical debate before 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 he well you know yeah that out. was very much age of ultron but feels but it's sort of like um it's like get because I was I was thinking actually I thought yeah technically we really haven't seen Vision like in a proper like sort of like leading role in like the sort of combat since since Age of Ultron really mm. even in Civil <laughs> War it's like he was he did some shit there but like but not a lot and a lot of the mm. time it's against the other heroes and him being like sort of easily one of the most compassionate and empathic um, mm. members of the Avengers yeah. he's not going to be outwardly trying to hurt anyone and then infinity war most of the time he was sort of like aside from all of the conflict in that end game he's dead and so <laughs> but like it's sort of um i was just thinking yeah we honestly haven't really had like a like a mm -hmm. sort of, first of all a big fight sequence of like getting to see his powers on full display like yeah we got earlier in the episode but then seeing like vision vision defeating an opponent in his own way of like you know his sort of using his like his sort of childlike view of the world and his sort of you know first of all his like well it's actually the two things it's his and like first of all his endless banks of knowledge and like sort of logic and intelligence but then also just his compassion and empathy and mm. like you know i like that when we actually did get because i was thinking yeah all right so what's the way that he's going to defeat the um white vision and then i was of like all the different ways i was expecting to go down the yeah, this is actually, like, this is sort of perfect for, like, mm -hmm. the way that he would mm -hmm. do it. Of, uh, like, it's just like, no, 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 wait a minute. Yeah, just, like, just... I know, like, and... Because I saw some people saying that, you know, of... um, I mean, uh, yeah, we don't know what's happened with White Vision. When, when there were some people saying, so did his, he go on a way to, to self-destruct or something? Mm -hmm. Because it's his prime directive is to destroy the Vision. And he is the Vision, so... Or Ooh. is he... Or has Vision told him that just, like, no, just go explore your um you know discover yourself you know sort of like you know you have the chance here to sort of become a new person mm. and like sort of mm. go and do your own thing 
but yeah, that that whole uh, that was really interesting. It's actually mm. I found. I'd have liked if we got like a little. I mean, it's it's a sort of thing of like I know people have been um talking a lot about like sort of things like that of like examples of like where obviously this is kind of like setting up for something else that's going to be um, going ahead. And so when people say it, let you know where. Um, I've seen a, a lot through Twitter over the last couple of days, people saying, you know, so we didn't really get any answers about this. And then someone's saying, well, yeah, but that's going to be answered in something else. But it's a sort of thing of you can, you can have some degree of resolution while yeah. still having the door open for what sort of story mm. to tell next, you know? And I yeah. feel like that's one of the things that was sort of, it's like, I would say that, yeah, White Vision, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, we are probably going to see more of him later, but then, like, but, but you know, like, we could have gotten some kind of little bit of sort of resolution to what was actually happening there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Um, like you said, Mitch, Wanda's whole arc was, like, handled very well. Mm. I was so happy as a, like, Scarlet Witch fan, like, someone mm. who's been a fan of her for so long, I was just, like, crying and being, like, Yes, it's done finally. Like we've waited mm. so long for her to be the Scarlet Witch, so I think that was all handled really well. And the fact that you know, I I sort of had a feeling that she'd do it, that she'd put the sort of like the uh, ruins up and she'd mm. use them at one point. So I was waiting for that, and it did happen. I was like, mm, okay, so she has learned a little bit of magic, and as we have been told, she is a lot more stronger than Doctor Strange, mm. and. I'm excited to see what else is going to happen. But I do mm. think, and we spoke about this again last night, mm. that she was sort of let off very easily at the very end. Yeah. Um, you know, like, I love, like, panning the camera around, showing people very angry at her. Brilliant. But I would have liked to have had, like, a really tense ending where, you know, maybe they're yeah. all, like, really like like what happened before like really overwhelming her maybe not loses her control of her power but she doesn't know what to do and monica mm. sort of rushes in and be like you have to leave now like mm. you know the fbi is coming and you know these people don't want you here you need to leave now um mm. so that's why and we said it last night that sort of with the whole mephisto thing which we will get to a little later and whole multiverse thing mm. but if Mephisto had been involved he would have been able to take advantage of her if there was a point like this and he would have been like no one wants you you're you're an enemy to everybody else come mm. with me you were accepted by me and mm. I think that would have been really cool but you know it was obvious that she always had to go into hiding like after everything yeah. that happened but I would have liked some tension at the end with her leaving. Like, yes, end it with her flying away, doing all that stuff, but it would have been good for her, like, people maybe in the distance screaming after her, like, nah, mm. nah, 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 like you know, angry and stuff like that. It would have been good mm. instead of them just standing around and watching her. But other than that, I think it, it was resolved. Her whole storyline was very well handled for the last episode. Yeah. I, I, oh, oh, sorry, goes there. Um, it's the thing I thought of, like, about midway through the episode when we were getting to that scene of everybody sort of turning on it. I was thinking, um, they've actually done a really interesting thing here of, like, um, like so the future of mutants in the MCU is, like, you know, still kind of in flux. We don't really know what what direction they're going to go with them um, of, like, in terms of, oh, is it going to be retconned or set up that there are still many mutants that have been around for quite a while mm. are they going to be set mm -hmm. up as a new development or something that's happened like sort of very recently but um i know that lots of people sort of when um last week we had the sort of like learning about wonder's powers being sort of present since she was little instead of being created by the um by the um in, uh the salt the, not soul stone the mind, mind stone, stone. Um, I know there's some people looking at that as it's sort of is this sort of setting up that she was a mutant and it's like not really it's more just that it's showing the inherent power as mm. like her as the Scarlet Witch this sort of like great figure of like sort of magic and power like she's always she had has. it in her and, mm. uh, but I feel like it's a good um, it's a good analogy for mutants in a way mm. what they did through this episode and like sort of setting up that if the yeah, in as much as mutants are an analogy for like sort of different oppressed minorities themselves the whole idea of like sort of the angle that they sort of set up a little bit with agatha and then really sort of developed with wanda in the last episode the idea of you know 
you're this one person that's sort of seen as so much more powerful than everybody else and they will hate you for it because they're afraid of your power, mm-hmm. they're afraid of what you can do. And it's sort of I would have I think it's it's one of those things where like I feel like they they were touching upon that, maybe in some early iterations of the script they developed it a lot further, but it sort of like felt like one of those things where like I would have liked just a tiny, tiny little bit more of that. Yeah, really that's like what that I wanted as well, idea. yeah. And like it's sort of Wanda's whole thing, like this has been like since Age of Ultron and more so in Civil War, has been that she is afraid of her own, her own power and she is afraid of how other people see her because of her power. And this is sort of, it's a little bit of a reiteration of that, but then also like sort of builds to the idea of, for one thing, she's starting to unlock this greater level of power that she has, which by extension would make her be more dangerous in the eyes of so many people, especially of um, Agatha saying that she is more powerful than the Sorcerer Supreme. It's like there would be good reason for Steven even to be afraid of her power. Oh yeah, definitely. And then, and so, um, but I think it's sort of, it's then that's sort of the next step of her journey is learning mastery over it, learning to not be afraid Mm. of herself Mm. so that, and because like she can't, she can't change the way others think about her, but she can change the way she thinks about herself. That's Wanda's arc, I would say, in terms of her power. Yeah, definitely. And that's what I'm thinking we might get to see a little bit more of in Multiverse of Madness. There's mm. also one interesting thing I thought of before, um, just like a little analogy about sort of where she's at at the moment as a character in terms of like what we've been theorizing about over the last few weeks of like, is she gonna be redeemed in the end is she gonna go bad is this going to be her vil- villain origin mm. story is this going to be her hero origin story i see it as a sort of thing of right now she's like ezra at the start of season three of rebels mm. like sort of towing the line a little bit she's found this way to tap into this sort of stronger and slightly darker power mm. but she's like no 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 it's cool like i've i've, I've got it handled it's all mm. fine you know don't worry i i know i know what i'm doing here but yeah. that she might not quite know what she's doing mm. here and exactly. like what what yeah. sort of power she's meddling with you know it's so like in her she's... eyes it may look good but to everybody mm. else it's like she's an evil witch we yeah. need to destroy her <laughs> and like with the dark hold as well like you know she's like using that and yeah. you know as we got set up it's like yeah the, the dark hold that's like to me i'm just seeing that as like it's like it's going to be like the sith holocron yeah um, rebels. yeah <laughs> Why someone else speak? <laughs> I was I was going to say uh, the whole point about like you know Wanda sort of being let off too easily. I think I as a tweet I saw uh, this morning that I did think really sort of just it was a good point and everything. So I said that you know there's the line right towards the end of the episode where Monica says um, referring to like you know Wanda letting um, Vision and the boys letting them go to take down the hex and everything. And she, Monica says to Wanda how, like, they'll never know how much she sacrificed them. It's like, well, yes, but she, she, she imprisoned and, and she imprisoned and traumatized them for a week. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's not like she was this, did, was like, you know, has, it was all along trying to help them and they just don't realize that. It's like, no, she's done horrible things to them. It's just because she yeah. did a sacrifice to them doesn't mean they should be grateful or something, you oh, know? Oh, yeah, definitely. And it's sort of like, I think Vision. I think it was Vision who said it a couple of weeks ago in an episode. He was saying, you've given them better jobs, you've given them better lives, but are they really happy? Mm. So I I totally agree mm. that it's messed up. Because even in mm. this episode, I'm pretty sure Wanda said, no, I'm helping you. You know, mm. I'm, you know, and I was like, no, you're not, girl. You are very much not helping them. These people want their normal lives back. But, um, you know, obviously she has her reasons for why she did it, but it doesn't make it okay. You know, Mm. she she entrapped these people in this world and they want nothing to do with it. They want to live their own lives. Um, So unfortunately, they got involved. And yeah, it it was a good line, like Monica saying that. But at the same time, it's like, no, it's not okay Mm, though. Like you can't be let off. It's a it's beautiful line, but not in this case, because it's like Mm. she trapped people. And even like, I think it was what's his name? The guy who worked with Vision. Um he was yeah. saying, like, you know, my dad's sick and, like, all this stuff. Like, everyone has a different life. Like, and especially with the whole children thing. Like, the children are trapped in their rooms. Like, that was, that scared me. That really mm. scared me that um, Dottie said that. Um, yeah. And just, yeah, again, it's not, she, like, there's no justification for what she did. Like, yes, she lost vision and she lost her kids, but it's not okay to get away with such a crime. Uh, so yeah, I would have liked a little bit more of a 
tense ending for one division. Mm. Yeah, agreed. I think that would have uh, made things feel a little more. I guess just be have a little more weight to everything. Mm. You know, if there was like this feeling of the events here aren't going to just be forgotten mm. anytime oh, soon. You know, it could be one of those things like with um Civil War. I remember when um when Age of Ultron was released, there was like lots of um sort of criticism at the time about like you know uh, everything that happened at sokovia and then it's like it was a sort of like okay yeah yeah we won we defeated everything you know yeah we we um say everyone but then like they tony created ultron in the first place and like you know everything mm. that happened here is basically his fault and then but then it's sort of um address that was then addressed in civil war yeah. and addressed very well but i think it's one of those things that yeah at, it's like it, you can do like this sort of thing of having it like it ends on a happy note here but then we get to see the darker side of it sort of explored yeah. a little more so I, yeah. I, I hope we do get to see the aftermath of all this whether it's like maybe at the end of spider-man maybe it's at the very beginning of doctor strange wherever it is i want to see the aftermath of what wonder's done and the effects of it and maybe people talking about it be like did you hear about the scarlet witch did you hear what she did she overtook mm. this town and stuff i really want to see the after effects because if there isn't then i'm going to be a little bit disappointed because yeah. people had to have known that there was a yeah. freaking red hexagon in the middle of the country and just no one did anything. So yeah. I, I, I hope that there is some like talk about it in the cu- upcoming movies. Because mm. I think yeah. I know there's some, people, there's some people saying that um supposedly like Wanda's going to become one of the major players in the sort of ongoing MCU storytelling mm. from this point onwards, um, beyond Doctor Strange, but like um Doctor Strange too. But like um um I think it's sort of it's interesting when you look at like her role in the world from like Age of Ultron onwards that it's like from there and like during Civil War she had she was like you know she had the Avengers there as like sort of to protect her and to mm. sort of like you know sort of keep her safe from the witch hunt that you yeah. know many people mm. would be wanting to you know commit towards her but then now she's sort of more that more on her own you know you know, think well I wonder, like, could I? I, I know there was, um, uh, I, I, I just thought of it just then of like the idea of, um, what if she ends up becoming the sort of like the basically the Magneto sort of figure in the MCU of like she's the one who's sort of she is in her words trying to do the good thing and like arguably she is sort of like trying to do the right sort of thing, but she's still seen as like this sort of very divisive figure by many who it's like you know she's she has done lots of terrible things in the past in and you know done them in you know the name of good and but you know there's still terrible things that she's done and there's lots of people that would be like coming for her with pitchforks and torches but she's sort of like you know going around the world doing a thing mm. sort of you know but it's like i just think that's an interesting sort of angle that they could pursue i think we yeah. should probably talk about the multiverse stuff that we talked about yeah. and maybe how it didn't happen in this mm. series because discuss the boner in the room yes. yeah <laughs> that's true yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that kind of didn't go the way we were expecting did it <laughs> yeah <laughs> we came up with the biggest theories like mephisto yeah. and just yeah. yeah it was fun though <laughs> yeah it is yeah it's uh it's like a lot of people like sort of uh seemingly we talked about this last night a lot of people sort mm. of um saying stuff like how people complain about the disliking the final episodes like oh you're just upset because dr strange didn't turn up or you didn't get mephisto and stuff and it's like well it's not it's well, not like fantastic then oh yeah, yeah the, 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 those ones. It's like, and it's like it's, it's not just like they're having theories like that that uh you know that's that we're upset that didn't happen because it's a great point that so someone make on Twitter, Zanny showed, showed it to me. It's like I mentioned this last night. The whole thing mm-hmm. of like um, with One Division's TV format, it did give us way more time to like come up with theories and stuff mm-hmm. than we did. Um, you know, we we do, would have with the movies, and so you know, watching it, there was more of an opportunity for us to be disappointed by stuff we could have theorized didn't happen because we had more time to think about it. And the person said, but, but regardless of that, if you binge watched One Division, you'd still be like, what the hell with a quick civil mm. reveal? Because even binge watching it, you still got to think, 
Evan Peters is here playing Quicksilver. Maybe it's somehow his Quicksilver. It's like, oh no, he's just some dude. Yeah. Okay. That's Cause even, funny, like, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Because even my sister, she's not a big ass nerd as I am, but she knows the X Men and stuff. But she was like, "Oh my god, that's X Men's Quicksilver!" And I was like, "Yeah." So it potentially means multiverse, and she was like really excited too. But then, yeah, it was just a big disappointment. Like the um, fact that it was just some random ass dude with Quicksilver's personality and stuff. Because mm-hmm. I sort of said and in powers. my reaction as well, and powers. Like I sort of said that. Maybe Agatha had ripped, like, she'd sort of looked for someone who was similar as Pietro, got the X-Men one, and put it into the necklace, and that's why he acts like Pietro. But at the same time, it was like, I was, like, really disappointed. I was just like, Mm. they had, and it was sort of like what we've always said, we didn't want another cop-out of multiverse, Mm. and it just shows that they're too scared to do multiverse, which is yeah. really sad because this show, like we said, it has the vibe of multiverse because of all these different times, like coming into mm. different episodes of the sitcoms and stuff, but also just like it's wonder. Like she mm. has come from multiple universes and she has traveled to multiple universes. So it was like sort of like obvious that it might happen so that that's mm. why all, everyone got excited and this is why I, we spoke briefly again last night about it we i really got annoyed with people saying you're not allowed to be upset because you came up with theories and stuff like they didn't mm. mean we're allowed to we're fans it's just no. like we we yeah. love the comics we love marvel and we're allowed to you know obviously make our theories and if it doesn't meet the theories then it's okay but at the same time don't criticize us for making those theories because we're allowed to to further iterate on that it's like yeah but mm. when they cast the the guy that played P- the played peter maximoff in the x-men films to play quicksilver in this mm-hmm. people are gonna start theorizing about it as like if say i said say um there was like um a lot of um like sort of random like rumors that sort of had sprung up and then like dissipated around with um endgame that i think at some point someone edited the IMDb page to say that Hugh Jackman was going to be in it as Wolverine. Mm-hmm. And so people were theorizing about that briefly, but they go, no, 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 that was just like, someone just blows mm-hmm. like, just like screwing around with the, of the page. But then I was thinking, okay, but say, say that had have happened, say Hugh Jackman mm-hmm. had have had a character in it with like peaked hair and mutton chops and claws and an accelerated healing factor. And he's a Canadian mercenary who smokes cigars <laughs> and calls people bub. But it's just some random dude. It's like, and then people say, "Oh yeah, it's your own fault for thinking that that was Wolverine." It's like, but, but, well, yeah, is it? <laughs> but, and, but yeah, um, I wanted. To, I've seen a few different people sort of like, um, lots of um, uh, different points people talk about of like the whole multiverse side of things and Peter's mm-hmm. side of things, and also like been trying to think of like the right way to put it into words. And yeah. so I figured, may as well do it here while we're talking about it. So I was going <laughs> to do a tweet about. This. Oh, I'll just do it here. Um. So, um, uh, people talking about when they say, okay, two multiverse cop-outs in a row with Stero and, and Peter, and then the response people have to that is then, but, yeah, but you seriously didn't think that Mysterio was telling the truth and, he, truth, and he is a hero from another universe. And mm. then the first thing I thought about that, it's like, well, no, it's Mysterio, but it's just the idea of, like, the multiverse and the idea of different Earths being brought up as a it's like it's it's it was cool to see that brought up cool to see that brought up as an idea Mm. but then having it be brought up as something that oh yeah this is just this made up thing that doesn't exist that this one character was just using as a random ploy Mm. to try and you know like sort of make himself seem like a good guy and and then sort of in the superhero movie after spider-verse came out yeah (laughs) and spider-verse was like the biggest thing at the time too it was the biggest multiverse thing that marvel had ever done so of course everyone's gonna get excited because it's like are they gonna do it in live action as well and then the spoiler trailer for far from home that features the end game spoilers also mentions the spoiler oh yeah it's the multiverse stuff for this one and it's like nah that's just that's that doesn't exist yeah you know, like, they just like, like shove like we're like nah yeah. we just used it in the trailer it's like yeah you can't do that that's false advertising yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah because it's the sort of thing going into the film i was thinking yeah i don't think he is from the multiverse or if he is he most certainly isn't a hero but it's like it's mysterious of course he's bullshit oh, yeah. that's what he does yeah. but the idea of like just the idea of like the sort of bring up the multiverse and sort of like the kind of like the tease like that are like sort of talking about and like discussing it as an idea 
it's sort of like all right it's well it's like i like the idea that it's i like the potential of like sort of bring it up and what that could mean for the future but at the same time it being brought up as like and the only sort of the first time it's properly discussed and explored in the story being as i oh know as just something that one dude made up you know mm-hmm. sort of thing it's sort of then it's like it's like that is a multiverse cop out so to speak, regardless of the fact that Mysterio is obviously lying because he's Mysterio. Yeah. It's just like the idea of like, it's like if um, I'm trying to think of another example of um, say um, Galactus, let's say Galactus mm. was name dropped a couple of times in one film or something and discussed as like, there's this major threat of Galactus out mm. there in the galaxy. And then, and then at some point in the movie, you find out there's this dude with a motion capture suit that has a hologram projector that projects yeah. this million and feet tall. And somehow has the and, helmet. And yeah. it's just, it's not real. He's just pretending yeah. to be this being that he made up. And I think it's the sort of thing that um, I'm, I, I'm keeping more of an open mind and like sort of no, of no offense to the films and to the creators, but keeping my hopes down a little bit. Yeah. I'm like, I'm sort of, I think that's sort of something I think I learned. Yeah. I think yeah. early on with Marvel, especially yeah. with Age of Ultron, because Age of Ultron, yeah. I will say, did let me down when I first watched it, because I was like, Ultron, oh my God. But then, I don't know, the film yeah. didn't really meet my expectations. So ever mm. since then, I was like, I'm just going to lower them a little and then watch it. And then if I don't like it, I don't like it. If I like it, I like it. Um, so that's why, sort of with this finale as well, I was like, if it ha- whatever happens will happen. But I will say, I did enjoy the episode. I did really like it, but it was a disappointment in terms of, you know, like just the multiverse stuff, because I think mm-hmm. we've we, like, as a fandom, we have been waiting for it for a long time. And I think it would have been nice to get it now. But like you said, Alex, I don't think we're going to get it for a while. Um, and uh, uh, sorry, Mitch, you and I spoke about this last night as well in terms of the race um, with DC and Marvel when it was happening. DC sort of are in the winning area with multiverse now. Um, so, you know, that's them. Good, good, good for them. But I think Marvel, I think they're waiting for the right moment. I thought now was the perfect moment, but I'm guessing they're holding off for something better. So I'm just hoping whenever it does happen, that it's going to be good. What are you, um, talking about of like, sort of, um, like theories and sort of disappointment and measuring expectations. It's sort of, um, it's something interesting that I guess it's sort of like, um, I don't know, maybe like it was a, like a l- little bit of a wake up call um, for me with um, like sort of one division that I remember. Um, Cause like I, I do enjoy the MCU. I do really like mm. it, but it's like a lot through a lot of it, it's sort of like from sort of like Avengers 1, well, not, not really, from like Iron Man 3 onwards, I would say. It was sort of like, it was like a bit of the sort of learning curve for me of sort of like expecting that I'm going to have plenty of theories. I'm going to have sort of like plenty of ideas and hopes, and the film isn't always going to live up to those. A lot yeah. of the time, it won't. And a lot of the time, it's sort of like, you know, there's all these different ideas I'll have about what it could be like. It won't always meet those expectations. Definitely. And that's part of the reason why I ended up enjoying Avengers Endgame so much is, um, as I said before, it's not that it exceeded my expectations. Like I said it's the only film I've ever watched where every single thing I was sort of thinking, it'd be really cool if they did this, but I know they won't. They did in it. Yeah. And so it's like, as I said before, it's the only, the single film, the only film I've ever seen that has 100% met my expectations. Mm. Mm. That I, I definitely agree with Endgame. Endgame, they and did so, it really well for me as yeah. well. They did it really well, especially for yeah. comic book moments. But I was thinking about, it's sort of um, the idea that, um, what was it? that um, The idea that um, it's sort of after Endgame, it's sort of like, it just sort of like changed my mindset a little, a little of thinking, oh my god, you can have all of these, like, sort of hopes and expectations for the film Mm. that will be met, and so on, and then it's sort of, like, it was, like, good to have, like, a little bit of a sort of, it's, like, it sounds bad, but, like, a little bit of a wake-up call of one division that, like, yeah, okay, you know, don't let, don't, don't, you know, like, it's just meet your expectations, you know, it's, like, Mm -hmm. don't expect too much of something, and I'd say it's part of the reason why, um, um, with Falcon and Winter Soldier, like, part of the reason why I'm sort of still like just as just as hyped if not more so than i was prior you know um prior to like the the one division finale and so on and like sort of off the further parts of one division as we started to like sort of just like gradually through like through this um series with aftermath plus like all of our different theories let's just like slowly started having to be, like, <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah 
but like a falcon and the winter soldier it's the sort of thing of like it's not a it's not a theories and expectations show for me that's not how i'm thinking of it how i'm seeing Mm. it i'm seeing it as we're gonna get some of the best side characters in the mcu just kicking ass and hanging out and interacting and bantering and sort of just like getting just like just this fun sort of like you know political thriller action romp you know yeah winter soldier i think will be a good sort of like palate cleanser in terms of like all the like sort of Mm. wild theories and expectations like stuff going into um not just one division but no way home and multiverse of madness it's like Mm. this is something where like we know what we're getting we know what's gonna be we know what sort of stuff we're gonna end like i'm just like i'm i'm looking forward to like it's just like because theories are cool, and I do like theories, but it's sort of like it's something I've always found of like um like mystery shows, like sort mm. of um Sherlock and Elementary, and like you know I used to watch those quite a bit. And it's always the sort of thing of like it's like it might just be sort of like me looking at myself as like just like a little bit slow, a little bit stupid sometimes as I solve other things. Like I don't want to, I don't want to waste time like sort of theorizing about who solved the who solved. The, of like who the who the killer is or like what happened here. It's like can I I just want to watch the thing. It's like can I just find out when the detective mm. tells me, and like it's sort of it's it is fun to theorize, but it's one of those things I always do get like a little bit drained from it. Of like mm. sort of it's like I, I I put too much energy into it. It's like I want to just want to sit back and enjoy the thing. Mm. And so I like that I'm I'm gonna be able to do that with Falcon Winter Soldier. It's like I'm not I'm not expecting. Listen, it's like we're gonna see Madripoor in it, yeah. Mm. That's cool. And there's some people thinking we're gonna introduce Wolverine's going to be interested. It's like, (laughs) where, in what way, how, How? and And who, and 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 like, and 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 then also just like just the fact that I'm I'm also just like kind of vehemently against the idea of introducing Logan into the MCU when they could just have Daphne Keane play Laura. Yeah, I think even everyone wants Daphne yeah. back and just yeah. wants her to play. Screw multiverse, screw connections to the X Men films. Doesn't matter. Just say that. Just have her walk walk on and say this is Laura Kinney. She is the Wolverine. And then like, yep, yeah, that's all we need to. That's all we need to hear. Mm. It's like she doesn't even. That's confirmed. Be a mutant. She doesn't even have to be a mutant. She can just be mm. like same as Wonder and Pietro. So there was some kind of like experimentation at some far off bunker or laboratory, and they created this young mercenary, this young genetically engineered mercenary called the Wolverine. It's like, yeah, okay, that's all I need to hear. And it's like, I just want to see Bucky, Sam, Sharon, and Sharon going around kicking ass and doing what yeah. they do. That's the same with me as well. I think I also want to, because yeah. this is something I've always wanted for a while, and they did say that it's sort of going to be like this, um, and especially because they did it in one division, like addressing grief. And just mm-hmm. like mental health and stuff, like I've always wanted to go deep dive into Bucky's like story because like yeah. he has so much trauma and stuff and PTSD and stuff from his past. So it's like, can we please like <laughs> go into his backstory a little and even just like sort of like find out what's happening with him at this moment? Because we've only yeah. seen very few bits of it. So now that his mind is fixed, do the triggers still work? What does he still think about himself as the Winter Soldier and just all that stuff? I'm really yeah. excited for that, and I hope we get to see a lot of that explored in that show. Because in um in Civil War, like I'd say, my favorite parts of Civil War are all of the bits where it's sort of being a direct sequel to to Winter Soldier, of like when we get to see like the sort of um Steve Sam. Bucky and Sharon like sort of working together as like the sort of team and like, when we're getting to explore Bucky's past and his sort of like connection and everything it's sort of like I do f- I do feel sometimes like I Civil War is pretty good it is mm. sort of like it's one of like uh, but it's sort of it's never really been one of my favorites in like the MCU it's, and I always feel that part of the reason why I feel like that is because it's like I feel like we're it's there's like half of a really really good sequel to Captain America the Winter Soldier in there which is one of my favorite MCU films but it's all kind of like a little bit lost under the whole Civil War side of everything Mm. which is sort of like and as such we only get sort of half of a it's sort of like it's kind of two different films sort of at war with each other a little bit Mm. it is integrated really really well the way they do it all and like I it's like if you even if you took out the whole Civil War part of it T'Challa's role in the story is still like that's it works so well. It works. Oh, so it's so well. That one like, was so well implemented. Yeah, that was very and, like, smart move. Of, 
introducing him in a way that like sort of immediately ties him into like all of the conflict that's going on through the story of like and also setting up that yeah Bucky has done a lot of shit and he's having to deal with that and it's like we're seeing it less so from just sort of Steve's perspective we're seeing now all the people that he's hurt we're seeing yeah, his because, victims yeah in that movie that we're not only told that you know he may have been involved with T'Challa's father's death but yeah. in reality he had killed the parents of like yeah the well people say he's the first Avenger but technically he's not yeah. Iron Man's parents like yeah. Tony's parents like like we didn't I didn't see that coming at all when mm. I watched the film I was like oh shit that's why they kept showing the throwbacks oh no um so yeah that was like yeah again bucky has so much history with people in the comics and even just in the films as well so like i'm excited to see if we see any more people who has been hurt by the winter soldier and if they do come up in the show or if it's just going to be more about you know him dealing with that trauma and even dealing with steve's like you know leaving and stuff because that was never addressed at the end of mm. Endgame. But yeah, yeah, hopefully that's addressed in this. I know that as well we're going um and even Sam as well. Like remember when we when we first meet him, he is like mm. he's in charge of a self help group for like sort of for, for veterans, you know. Mm. And like he's obviously seen some seen some shit as well. Yeah. Like wasn't it that his his partner in the Falcon program died in action and like it's sort of getting to see that sort of thing explored of like steve was his partner in combat as well mm. and he didn't die in action but like you know it was like you know that's someone else that he's lost and like mm. sort of getting to explore more of that i know as well that um they've said we're gonna get to learn a little bit about we're gonna meet sam's family and the story i know that um uh one of the cast members for the show has recently confirmed she's gonna be playing sam's sister oh so, nice like, to visit in the course of the story and like i think I, I would I it's one thing that's like it's sort of like um, again like more of a hope rather than something that's been talked about. I wonder if we, are we going to get to learn a little bit about Bucky's family as well and like sort of that's yeah and to see him doing what Steve what well, we saw Steve doing of like sort of going around to like trying to find out okay so like you know like what was the line in Winter Soldier all the members of my barbershop quartet are dead so <laughs> it's like <laughs> um, I saw some people sort of suggesting that they all theorizing about that they think that. Sharon and Bucky are going to be a thing. And please uh, don't. <laughs> I mean like I've I felt the same sort of way of like when they had um when they did um um Natasha and Bruce in Age of Ultron. It's mm. like I I kind I kind of get it but at the same time I kind of don't. Yeah, that's the and same with me. Sort of I was like, like, yeah. like and it's the sort of but then it's like I I like I I mean like uh, yeah, of of all of the characters it's sort of like I like that Bruce isn't someone that she really sort of like, you know, flirted with that much. If anything, it was more like sort of like setting up this kind of sort of connection. They have, but they both mm. of them sort of see each other as like they're, they're kind of, they're monsters. So sort of like, you know, mm. yeah, we're, everybody else's heroes, we're just monsters. It's like, I do like that angle. Of yeah. Like sort of, you know, sort of thing. But even it's sort of like, it kind of comes out of left field. And then it's sort of, but so it's like, I don't know. I, if I've, they do, I've, I'm sorry. If they do if, Sharon and Bucky, I'm yeah. going to be very upset because it's like, no, I don't want it. Please get it away from me. Yeah. Like I think. I was just I was just thinking about like the joke of like Sh Sharon going on the rebound of Steve's ex and like. It's... <laughs> no. <laughs> I'd be really weirded out by that, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was already weird enough because Steve was dating Peggy's, what was it? Grand niece, I think she. Grand niece. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, because yeah, I mean, it's fine because it was in the comics. But at the same time, at the se when they kissed, I was like, yeah. I like it. But at the same time, it's yeah. a little weird. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I know. God. I now she, I'm scared. <laughs> she only has a thing for, 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 for men in their hundreds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you look hella fine. <laughs> I think just to finish up this final yeah. aftermath for One Division, because I unfortunately yeah. just saying now I don't have time to do another review video for yeah. One Division. Unfortunately, just because I have uni tomorrow, I need yeah. to get this video out for that. Um, so let's review One Division right here. We can just say overall, and you guys, we can also give scores for episodes and stuff, and maybe which episode was our favorite. So starting off with one of you, boys. Okay, okay. Um, uh, 
I, I want to mention that uh, last night I was actually looking at the IMDb page for One Division, seeing like the episode ranking of like because mm-hmm. like I just have like, like aggregated scores and um, scores and so on. I saw that um the the highest ranked episode I saw like the one that like I think is sitting at something like like nine point six. Ooh. Because, um. Uh. It's the one. Um. It's called on a very special episode, the one like the eighties set one where we. First of all, get the reveal of of Peter turning up at the end. Mm. We introduce like sort of uh, it develop a, lo- a little bit more about like sort of learning about the kids and where we get like the the marriage story scene between <laughs> um, between Wonder and Vision. Mm. And it's like, yeah, I would agree. That was probably like like of like a lot of the episodes are like so sort of, like the like I mean I it's sort of like I, I, it was like. <laughs> Regular thing, like through all the different episodes, of, like me of this so far, of me saying you're like, yeah, that was my favorite episode so far. Mm. Like honestly, yeah, thinking back, that one was really, really, really good. It's like I'd probably say that was probably, probably if not if not my favorite, then probably the best one. My favorite, mm. and I'm very annoyed with the people of I, the kind people of IMDb that uh, this this is sitting at the lowest ranking in terms of reviews. It was episode two, probably. Oh, dude. I was like, oh, on, that was I know that I know not a lot happened in it, but the whole scene of Paul playing Vision is drunk, full of full of <laughs> chewing gum. It's like, come on, that's the best episode of the series. <laughs> and that was Paul's a great performance from Paul. Oh, you know, yeah, and it's like, and the f- I, yeah, episodes one and two were the lowest ranked of the thing. Mm. I think two is ranked a little higher than one, which is like, okay, at least it's not at the bottom. Mm. But even then, one was really, really good too. Really, you know, like, one no was a great that. introduction into it. That really, really creepy, like sort of setup, and like it's like I'd say it was the creepiest episode. Oh yeah, Ver- mm. number one was the creepiest because just like yeah. the choking part, and even just the ending of like seeing someone watching the show. Yeah. That's when everyone was like, "What the fuck is going on?" Like, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, I'd say overall the show is like a solid seven for me. Mm. It's like it's sort of um, it. I, I guess it's one of those things I would just I think this is sort of like a um what's what uh a nice way of describing because it's, it's the sort of thing of like I I I did really really enjoy a lot of it and it's like even if I found the finale a little bit underwhelming and like the show as a whole a little bit underwhelming the um the individual parts are greater than the holes I would say yeah that's my kind of view on it of mm. like like lots and lots of the show was absolutely fantastic even if I feel that altogether it didn't really knit it didn't really what it didn't really knit as well as a like sort of like a single like sort of over on or overall like kind of feature or story mm. as it could have there was a whole lot of it that was really really good and that i really really enjoyed yeah um so yeah uh mitch uh honestly i probably disagree with most of what you said there i think it's yeah for me it's probably about like a seven it's like i do have a lot of i do have especially the ending a lot of uh critiques about it and stuff that i wish had done better but for the most part it's like for the most part it was something new and different and fresh adding to the mcu and uh told the story of two characters that have sort of been on the sidelines the whole time and making them into what they have seemed to have become now like just good which they never seemed to be before like these two major fan favorite characters the mcu and you know just just getting to see them uh, uh, brought to life more than they were able to be in the movies. That was, I think, probably the the best thing that we got from the show. Mm. Favorite episode? It's uh, a good so question. Lots, lots of people were saying the Halloween one, and it's like that was good, but I just like I uh, I I just found the theme song incredibly annoying for that one. So it's like, <laughs> I can't really get past that. It's like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I, I don't know if I would have a favorite episode more just sort of just favorite moments. Mm. I yeah, do. Yeah. I do love the, um, the, the, the marriage story scene. Yeah. You know, Cause I was, I think with Elizabeth and Paul are just fantastic in that scene. So mm. yeah. yeah. It's like, I know that they I was, were brilliant. I saw lots of people saying that like, um, even some of the people that like sort of really dislike the, the finale or like the show overall, the most they said, it's like, one thing everybody can agree on is like Paul and Elizabeth and like everybody like just like acted the shit out of it. Oh show. yeah, mm-hmm. it's like they like uh, yeah. The, if like, anything, um, they deserve a couple of awards for acting because yeah. 
the mm. acting in this show was so good, especially for something that was Marvel, like the topics that they were covering and just even just the acting again, was just so good from mm. Elizabeth and Paul. So I expect to see nominations for them. If there's not, yeah. I will be very upset. <laughs> um, I think overall with the season, I think I also will give it a seven. Um, again, sort of like what you both said, it, it didn't knit well as like a whole when it came to the ending. Um, but I think maybe if I go back and watch it, maybe it might. But at the same time, I was, uh, yeah, very much let down at the very end. I think the only thing that sort of saved it for me was Scarlet Witch. Because Scarlet Witch, again, favorite, like, character from the MCU. Um, she's just so incredibly powerful. And just, uh, they also, just going to say, the costume very much oh, yeah. me nice. echoed a lot of Magneto. And I was like, yeah. Yes. Like, oh, this is like the closest thing we'll get to Magneto. So, like, I'm happy with it. Um, I think my favorite episode, I think it also has to be the one with the marriage story. Um, mm. pardon it. But I also think, I think, what episode was it? Um, oh, yeah. Episode, n- no, episode eight, because just the, yeah, the yeah. amount, mm. the themes that they covered in that especially because I was playing Life is Strange on the side as well. It's sort of yeah. both like correlating to each other, especially on the topics of grief and talking about the past and stuff. That very much hit me very hard because just like it was very nostalgic and just even like the idea of like, you know, like moving on from death, et cetera. And like just everything, like especially I think Elizabeth really stood out in that episode for me. Like she was so good in it and her acting just really like, made it all the more better and just i absolutely Mm. loved it and just i think the thing from the whole entire season was just katherine hahn she surprised me so much because i was like i I, i've never seen anything with her in it so i was like oh okay i know she does comedy but i was like i don't know what i'm going to expect i hope i like her acting let's just see and she besides elizabeth and obviously paul i think she definitely was just like one of the best and i was just like I, I fell in love with her by the end of it. I was like, you are an incredible actress and I hope you get a nomination or something because you were so good in this. And just, I again, I like sort of with the ending that we got for Agatha, I, th- I hope we get to see her again because... Mm, I think we will. Yeah. I think it's sort of, um, as Wanda said, you know, I know where to find you if, mm. uh, you know, WandaVision, all the things that it did differently are saying like, you know, how can something as like, you know, in quotes, generic as Falcon and the Soldier live up to that but then it's like, oh, it's like it, it's not trying to. That's not mm. the point. The whole point mm. of One Division was to go in like a different direction and do something like completely new for the MCU. When the whole point of Falcon Winter Soldier is just like a further exploration of this one sort of this one particular corner of the mm. MCU that we've had, so like slowly developed a little further through like um, Winter Soldier and Civil War, and and we'll see developed even further with Black Widow as well i feel like it's gonna be like sort of 100 percent this side of you know the mcu and the sort of like you know, sort of spy part spy and like sort of political thriller side of it so thank you guys so much for watching and joining us for the past couple of weeks for the one division aftermath hope you enjoyed it and for the children for the children, for the children. bye everybody bye